How's it going? In the previous video, we discussed the Revolutionary Landing Vehicle Tract, or LVT, often referred to as alligators for their ability to traverse land like an alligator through any type of terrain conditions. So now, we will be following alongside with their armored variants, as what else would be better suited to support a naval landing than a fellow heavily armed and well-armored amphibious vehicle. The first iteration was the LVT-A Mark I, the A standing for armored. Although given the name, one would presume that it would be based on the original LVT-1, it was actually based on the LVT-2. It would see an increase in armored plating on the deck to protect against a shrapnel, and the front would have 2 inches of armor. The turret was a modified M5A1 turret with a 37mm rifled gun, alongside a 30 caliber coaxial machine gun with two rear 30 caliber machine guns. It had six crew, a driver, a commander, and the rest were gunners or loaders. In total, around 500 of these units were produced. The engine was a Continental W670-9A, which produced 250 horsepower. This engine would remain same in all the variants listed today. The speed was similar to the LVT-2, with the maximum speed on water of 6.2 miles per hour, and on land it was 25 miles per hour. Maximum endurance on land was 125 miles, while on the water it was 75 miles. These would begin to see action, and primarily be used during the Marshall Islands campaign, as they assisted LVTs in the initial assaults on these islands. After initial waves of LVT-A1s were splashed, it became apparent that due to numerous beach obstacles and terrain differences, led to the original 37mm gun becoming inadequate for fire support. As at the ranges it would be forced to engage from, it would not be effective against heavily armored beach obstacles or bunkers. This was demonstrated in early 1944 at Roy Namur. So, beginning in 1944, with the FMC still producing them, the LVT A4 was born, and would see a total of 1,890 units being produced, with eventually some of these units being transferred to the Army and the British. To increase the firepower, they took the turret of the 75mm howitzer mortar carriage M8 and essentially copied the original LVT A1's design and mounted it on. Some variants saw the 75mm gun being replaced with the Ronson flamethrower. Initially, it had a single 50 caliber machine gun installed on the turret's rear. However, some models would see two 30 caliber machine guns instead. It also had a cab 30 caliber machine gun. Its armor, at its thickest, was 1.5 inches at the gun shield and the rest of the turret being 1 inch. The hull was only a quarter inch thick. It maintained the same crew of 6 men as the previous model. Its combat weight was roughly 40,000 pounds, but this doesn't seem to really affect its endurance as its maximum speed was once again very similar, with a top speed of 25 miles per hour on land and 7 miles per hour in the water. The maximum endurance was the same as the previous variant. This variant first saw action from Saipan and onwards onto further battles such as Iwo Jima, where it proved what it was truly capable of doing with its new 75mm gun in support of the Marines in their landings. The last of the upgraded LVTs of the Second World War came in the form of the LVT A5. However, it was produced in 1945, with a total of 269 being accepted, even after the war. It would not see service until the Korean War though. It featured a new power traverse mechanism for the turret and an elevation stabilizer for the main gun. Included in those additions was an auxiliary generator to compensate for the increased draw of electricity. The armor was the same as the previous model, and it maintained the same crew of six. It also came in at around the same weight of 40,000 pounds. And that's going to wrap up another video. As always, I appreciate all feedback. It helps me make the adjustments that I need to make a better viewing experience for you. So with that said, if you have anything you'd like to add, please leave it down below. I greatly appreciate it. And I plan to bring a longer video next week as I have a bit more time on my hands to um, focus towards a video. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next one.